Hey guys, this is Coach Evans coming back at you with another episode from Sip the Tally Films. Today we're going to talk about our defensive depth chart coming at you right now. Welcome back. This is Coach Evans with Sip the Tally Films. And before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, which is my projected defensive depth chart, make sure you hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and click that also. And make sure you tell a friend and tell a friend to subscribe to Sip the Tally Films so they can know what we got going on with the Baltimore Ravens. Well, let's get right into it. Well, this is my defensive depth chart. A couple days ago, we did the offensive depth chart. And I had um, 26 or so guys on there. On the defensive depth chart, I have 23, I think. So that puts us at like 48, 49 for mine. And you keep in mind, you got a kicker, pun, a snapper. So based off my two depth charts, that put us right at um, 52 people. You know, somebody's going to get in there, you know, you know somewhere. Uh, but let's dig right into it and let's start with the defensive tackle. I'm going to start off by saying what these um, um, initials stand for, for those that don't know. DT is defensive tackle. Um, that's probably uh, one of our four eyes or four techniques. A nose tackle, that's the zero or shade. A defensive end, that's going to be the other um, four eye, well, however we play that position. Uh, rush in, that's going to be our outside guy. That's going to be one of our edge guys. And keep in mind, we play two edge guys. Uh, middle linebacker, that's your guy sitting in the middle, kind of like your quarterback of the, the defense. Uh, WLB is weak side linebacker. That's the, the, the linebacker opposite of the the mic, he's more of your speedy guy. More, he probably can cover more. Cr probably can cover better than the Mike linebacker. Mike linebacker is kind of like a, a run stuffer type guy. Uh, Sam linebacker for us, that's another edge guy. That's a guy that can, he can rush the passer and also drop into the flats. He has to be versatile, versatile enough to do those things. Uh, CB, which is cornerback, I got CB one, cornerback one, CB two, cornerback two. SS is strong safety. That's more of your box player. He can come down with your run fits and run the alley, make a bunch of tackles. And free safety is a guy with range. He can uh, cover, you know, try to cover the middle of the field when cover three and one. And, uh, you know, also he's a little bit better coverage guy than a strong safety most of the time. Uh, but let's, with that being said, we got the acronyms out. This is the perfect time to give this video a thumbs up. And while you're down there, make sure you go ahead and click that subscribe button. Thanks. So let's get into my first defensive start, and we're going to start with defensive tackle. The guy that I think is going to start there is Michael Pierce. Pierce has been there for a while. He's going to um, – he was a starter last year. Uh, continue to be the starter this year. I expect big things out of him, um, and he's, he's a run stuff. He's a run stuff. He does a good job of just shutting down the run and not letting – you know, a gap runs take place, and I don't know if they asked him to be a two gap player, but if so, he does he does a good job of doing it. And he was one of the defensive calls that lets our linebackers uh, run free. Run free, sorry. All right, his backup, I got uh the rookie, Dalen Mack from Texas A&M. Uh, Mack is a prototypical uh, nose tackle, defensive tackle that's gonna. You know what? Now that I think about that, let's flip these. Let's flip these guys right here. So the, the backup for Pierce is going to be Willis. Because Drew, Drew Willis has more more mobility than Mac. And so he can he can kind of play the three technique or the four eye and go do those type of things. Mac is more of a, a, a zero technique or a nose, so we're going to make him the backup to the nose. But the starter for the nose is Brandon Williams. Williams again, like Pierce, a stud in the middle, of, stud in the middle can can get things done and, and just clogs that stuff up and takes eat up, eats up blockers for our linebackers to run free. So Brandon's back up is going to be uh, Mac, Dalen or Dylan, however you say it, from Texas A&M. All right, at the defensive end position, this is where we lost a lot. Um, you know, we got guys that, that got to step up and, and kind of fill Suggs' role and other guys' roles that, that left and departed. So, um, right now, I got as my projected starter, Henry, Willie Henry. And, uh, you know, we, we know we're going to ask for a, a lot out of a guy that didn't play much last year, but the potential is there. Potential is there. And I think he's going to beat out 
uh, a starter from last year. Well, this guy started at the beginning of the season, season last year. Wormley. I think Wormley's uh, going to take a step back because Henry's going to emerge. And so now we got uh, Chris Wormley backing up uh, Henry, and those guys can kind of play interchangeable. If, if one goes out, we shouldn't lose much because of what Wormley did for us last year. All right, let's go to Rush. This is going to be one of our edge guys that, that get after the quarterback. And, uh, you know, most people are probably going to pencil in T.M. Williams right here. I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and start with the sack daddy, our rookie, Jalen Ferguson. Uh, the more and more I watch film on Ferguson, the more and more I, I, I see what he did. And the only my only concern is can his skill set translate to the league because he did against weaker competition. But I'm starting to think it will because his technique was pretty solid. His technique and the things he did were pretty solid. He's going to get stronger with, you know, in the NFL. Uh, he's probably going to get faster in the NFL too, have a little, be a little more twitchy guy. But um, I, I really think because he's uh, technique sound, he's going to win that spot and, and be a, a great edge rusher for a long time for Baltimore Ravens. He's going to fill in for Suggs for the next 10 years, I think so. At least I hope so. All right, and backing him up, obviously Tim Williams. Let me put a T there so we won't get him confused. Tim just got to come in and compete, man. Got to stay healthy. Got to stay healthy. Now, you know, I got him as the number two rush guy, but he can easily be one. He just got to stay healthy and got to bring out his skill set every day. Got to bring his – because, you know, uh, in the NFL, they love the, the younger guy. They love the younger guy. But uh, right now, I got Ferguson starting Tim Williams as his backup. Uh, Mike Linebacker. I think Peanut's going to slide from the weak linebacker position to be the Mike. Um, I really like the way Peanut came on at the end of the year. I hope he, he can continue to ascend because uh, his second half of the season last year was awesome. Making tackles, covering guys, uh, causing turnovers. Just, he was great. Peanut was great last year. Um, and his backup, his backup is going to be a guy that's on the roster already, but not, I haven't really seen much out of him. I just think, I think he's going to make it because we didn't get a lot of inside linebacker help unless we, you know, pick up a, a veteran guy. But that'd be um, Chris Bound. And the only reason I got him there because he was there last year and he he knows the system. So I think he can beat out those uh, some of those uh, undrafted free agents we picked up. Because I think we picked up like four linebackers. You know, to try to feel, try to find some some depth at linebacker right there. All right, weak side linebacker. Uh, this guy was Peanut's backup last year. And he came in and did a great job. While uh, I want to say while Peanut was hurt, I think. And this is uh, Kenny Young. We all know Kenny Young can run. We all know Kenny Young can cover. But can he last the entire 16 games? That's the key. Can he keep up the entire 16 games? I think he fell off toward the end of the year. But I think part of that falling off was Peanut coming back and being healthy. Because obviously we had Mosley in the middle. And uh, Peanut came in and did a great job. And Young did a great job at the beginning of the year when Peanut was hurt. But when Peanut came back and he just emerged, he went on, he went on another level. Had Peanut played like that all year, he'd probably been a, a Pro, Bowl, Pro Bowl linebacker. All right, but backing up Kenny Young. It's going to be one of our was it, UDFAs. I got um, Alkaya. Alkaya. Let me see how you say. He's from Texas A&M also. I think he'll make the team as that, that backup. Uh, pronunciation, I probably jacked it up. You know, I'm human. But uh, that's the guy I think is going to win out of those, those. If you look at all those linebackers we've got for uh, UDFAs, I think he's the best one. And, and I, I say that based off looking at the highlight films from him. I looked at the highlights of four of the guys. He has the best tape to me. And so that's why I think he's going to uh, make the roster and, and beat those other three guys out. Moving over to our Sam linebacker, which is going to be another rush guy for us. And there, I think our Sam, Sam linebackers are set because these two guys were here last year. I'm looking for a big year out of this guy, Matt Judon. Uh, Ten plus sacks is, is mandatory. He needs to lead the way. He needs to, to teach Ferguson. He needs to uh, just be a leader of, of those edge guys and be a leader of the overall defense. You know, he just he, he's he's one of the veterans in there. He got to get in there and produce. And it's a contract year for him, I think. So he's gonna be motivated to get out there and, and get it. So you know, ten plus sacks. Uh, if you can reach 17, 18, 19, 20, that'd be great. But and and if I'm gonna say this, if he gets to ten plus or even fifteen plus sacks, it won't just be Judon. It'll be Pierce and Williams helping him out. Because if those guys eat up blockers, them edge guys can, can, can eat out there. And bagging him up is Bowser. 
Bowser was uh, on the team last year, injured guy. Uh, hope he can stay healthy. That way we can have a good rotation and keep fresh edge guys in there. Because if you look at it, let's look at our two edge positions, Rush and Sam. Ferguson, Tim Williams, Judon, and Bowser. If we can keep those guys healthy, they can stay fresh and they can get after the quarterback. If we can keep them healthy, keep them fresh, those four guys I have confidence in getting getting after the quarterback. Now let's slide on the cornerback, which I think we had the best secondary in the league overall. Uh, cornerback one is Marlon Humphreys. Marlon Humphrey or Humphreys, whichever one of them say Humphrey. Um, obviously, he emerged as the best cornerback on our team last year. Had a great year. Um, you know, Alabama kid that just worked on his technique. He was already coached by Saban. And I mean position coached by Saban because, you know, Saban does secondary uh, at, at Alabama. And uh, he just emerged as a, a – once he caught up with the speed of the game, he, he was a lockdown guy. You know, yeah, somebody, some guys caught balls on him, but for the most part, he come up and tackle, he get picks, he get um, – PBUs, he he he's that 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 deal for us. All right, bagging um Humphreys up. Uh, it's one of our off-season investments. And if I had nickel on here, he would be the starting nickel. That's uh Tavon Young. Tavon is, I think Tavon's the highest played nickel cornerback in the league, and he he played like that. Tavon did a good job of uh manning the slot position. You know, keeping down some of those uh slot guys, the Amendola types and keeping those guys in check, you know, letting the defensive ends and the, and the defensive tackles get after the quarterback by covering four or five, six seconds. But anything over that, anybody, nobody can cover that long. All right, cornerback two. All right, this is the only position I have three guys there because I couldn't really leave this the, the third string guy off because, because of his potential. But I have um, Jimmy Smith as a starting cornerback. Jimmy Smith. Uh been long time Raven, one of the few guys left from the Super Bowl team. I think Jim was on the Super Bowl team. Um, so, you know, injuries happen to Jimmy a lot, so hopefully he'll stay healthy. But if not, we got a guy that's never injured behind him, Brandon Carr. Brandon Carr did a good job, a solid corner, a solid number. He started off as a number two corner last year and uh, ended up starting a lot of games because Jimmy was hurt. And we had a great rotation between Humphreys, uh, Jimmy Smith, and Carr once, once all three of them were healthy. And the third string guy behind Carr, I have Anthony Avery. I think Avery's going to uh, improve from last year and get more PT. Uh, you can never have an, enough good corners. Never have enough good corners. That's evident by us drafting a corner to, to add to this. I didn't think we needed to do that, but we did. But I kind of have a, a, a trick for drafting that corner. Let's move on to strong safety. Tony Jefferson. Tony Jefferson is, 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 is an animal when it comes to physicality. He's an extremely uh, high-intensity competitor. He loves to compete. He don't mind bringing wood to, to tight ends, to running backs out the backfield. He, Tony Jefferson brings that funk. He's your throwback, tough, strong safety that plays around the, the line of scrimmage and can, can get after it. Don't mind blitzing, uh, taking on blocks, getting uh, taking on fullbacks. Tony Jefferson gets after it. He's one of the toughest guys on this team. Backing up Tony Jefferson, I have Anthony Levine. Or Levine, however you want to say it, tomato, tomato. Um, he, he's going to be Jefferson's backup. Uh, produced a little in a few snaps he got last year. Uh, he, can, he has a little bit more range than Jefferson, but Jefferson is way more uh, tougher than, than him at the time. But um, I think he'll be a great backup, and if something happens to Jefferson, I don't think we will see a huge drop-off. Uh, free safety, our biggest investment in offseason. Oh, let me spell that. And for him being our biggest investment, he gets his whole name on the board. <laughs> Earl Thomas. Um, what what can I say about Earl Thomas? Probably the best safety, in, free safety in the league. Uh, potentially could be a Hall of Fame guy for the stuff he did up in Seattle. Uh, from what I've been reading and hearing, he's coming to the uh, the castle and been a leader from the jump. So, you know, what, Earl's going to make this group better. I already think we had probably the, the best or one of the best secondaries in the league without him. And the fact that he's on the team now makes that notion even – I feel better by saying that, that we have the best secondary in the league. I can say it without any doubt in my voice. I'm confident about it. And bagging up Earl Thomas, which is a guy that would probably eventually take his spot in three to four years, 
Iman Marshall. The rookie that we drafted at cornerback. Uh, watching his tape, you'll see him get beat some. But when he's in phase, he does a good job of uh, breaking the ball up and separating ball from receiver. So with that skill right there, moving him to free safety with cornerback speed is to me is a no-brainer. He can learn from Earl Thomas for uh, two years, three years, and when Earl decides to hang his cleats up or decides to go anywhere else, you'll have a guy that has learned from the best and should be in his prime as far as his NFL smarts at that time. And, you know, hopefully Earl stays healthy and can teach and, and show and show Iman the right way. But I think we drafted Iman Marshall to be a safety and not a cornerback. Initially, I was confused by it, but just sitting back looking at it and then watching his tape, I think Iman's going to be a, a good safety. I'm not going to say a great safety. I mean, a good safety, a good contributor. A contributor, I'm sorry. A good contributor to our defense. And um, he'll help us out, you know, down the line. So that's my defensive depth chart. Uh, make sure you comment and and because uh, I know it's gonna be a bunch that didn't agree, don't agree with me. Some guys didn't agree with me about the offense, and we're still kind of going back and forth on that. But that's what I'm here for to have dialogue between the Ravens flock. Uh, before you get out of here, too, make sure you I'm gonna have put a link in the description to my Teespring page. You can get your Ravens uh, Roundup T-shirt. You can get the Athlete T-shirt. I appreciate you guys' support. We're close to 1,500 subscribers, growing daily. And this is Coach Evans. I'm out.